Section one of the art of cookery made plain and easy, which far exceeds anything of the kind yet published. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass To the Reader I believe I have attempted a branch of cookery which nobody has yet thought worth their while to write upon. But as I have both seen and found by experience that the generality of servants are greatly wanting in that point, therefore I have taken upon me to instruct them in the best manner I am capable, and, I dare say, that every servant who can but read will be capable of making a tolerable good cook, and those who have the least notion of cookery cannot miss of being very good ones. If I have not wrote in the high polite style, I hope I shall be forgiven, for my intention is to instruct the lower sort, and therefore must treat them in their own way. For example, when I bid them lard a fowl, if I should bid them lard with large lardoons, they would not know what I meant. But when I say they must lard with little pieces of bacon, they know what I mean. So in many other things in cookery, the great cooks have such a high way of expressing themselves, that the poor girls are at a loss to know what they mean and in all receipt books yet printed there are such an odd jumble of things as would quite spoil a good dish and indeed some things so extravagant that it would be almost a shame to make use of them when a dish can be made full as good or better without them for example when you entertain ten or twelve people you shall use for a cullis a leg of veal and a ham, which, with the other ingredients, makes it very expensive, and all this only to mix with other sauce. And again, the essence of ham for sauce to one dish, when I will prove it for about three shillings, I will make as rich and high a sauce as all that will be when done. For example, Take a large deep stew pan, half a pound of ham, fat and lean together. Cut the fat and lay it over the bottom of the pan. Then take a pound of veal, cut it into thin slices, beat it well with the back of a knife, lay it all over the ham. Then have six pennyworth of the coarse lean part of the beef cut thin and well beat. Lay a layer of it all over with some carrot then the lean of the ham cut thin and laid over that then cut two onions and strew over a bundle of sweet herbs four or five blades of mace six or seven cloves a spoonful of allspice or jamaica pepper half a nutmeg beat a pigeon beat all to pieces lay that all over half an ounce of truffles and morels then the rest of your beef a good crust of bread toasted very brown and dry on both sides. You may add an old cock beat to pieces. Cover it close and let it stand over a slow fire two or three minutes, then pour on boiling water enough to fill the pan. Cover it close and let it stew till it is as rich as you would have it, and then strain off all that sauce. Put all your ingredients together again, fill the pan with boiling water, put in a fresh onion, a blade of mace, and a piece of carrot, cover it close, and let it stew till it is as strong as you want it. This will be full as good as the essence of ham for all sorts of fowls, or indeed most made dishes, mixed with a glass of wine and two or three spoonfuls of ketchup. When your first gravy is cool, skim off all the fat, and keep it for use. 
this falls far short of the expense of a leg of veal and ham and answers every purpose you want if you go to market the ingredients will not come to above half a crown or for about eighteen pence you may make as much good gravy as will serve twenty people take twelve penneth worth of coarse lean beef which will be six or seven pounds cut it all to pieces flour it well take a quarter of a pound of good butter put it into a little pot or large deep stew pan and put in your beef keep stirring it and when it begins to look a little brown pour in a pint of boiling water stir it all together put in a large onion a bundle of sweet herbs two or three blades of mace five or six cloves a spoonful of allspice a crust of bread toasted and a piece of carrot then pour in four or five quarts of water stir all together cover close and let it stew till it is as rich as you would have it when enough strain it off mix it with two or three spoonfuls of ketchup and half a pint of white wine then put all the ingredients together again and put in two quarts of boiling water cover it close and let it boil till there is about a pint strain it off well add it to the first and give it a boil together this will make a great deal of rich good gravy you may leave out the wine according to what use you want it for so that really one might have a genteel entertainment for the price the sauce of one dish comes to but if gentlemen will have french cooks they must pay for french tricks a frenchman in his own country will dress a fine dinner of twenty dishes and all genteel and pretty for the expense he will put an english lord to for dressing one dish but then there is the little petty profit i have heard of a cook that used six pounds of butter to fry twelve eggs when everybody knows that understands cooking that half a pound is full enough or more than need be used but then it would not be french so much is the blind folly of this age that they would rather be imposed on by a french booby than give encouragement to a good english cook i doubt i shall not gain the esteem of those gentlemen however let it be as it will it little concerns me but should i be so happy as to gain the good opinion of my own sex i desire no more that will be a full recompense for all my trouble and i only beg the favour of every lady to read my book throughout before they censure me and then i flatter myself i shall have their approbation i shall not take upon me to meddle in the physical way farther than two receipts which will be of use to the public in general one is for the bite of a mad dog and the other if a man should be near where the plague is he shall be in no danger which if made use of would be found of very great service to those who go abroad nor shall i take it upon me to direct a lady in the economy of her family for every mistress does or at least ought to know what is most proper to be done there therefore i shall not fill my book with a deal of nonsense of that kind which i am very well assured none will have regard to i have indeed given some of my dishes french names to distinguish them because they are known by those names and where there is a great variety of dishes and a large table to cover so there must be variety of names for them and it matters not whether they be called by a french dutch or english name so they are good and done with as little expense as the dish will allow of i shall say no more only hope my book 
will answer the ends i intend it for which is to improve the servants and save the ladies a great deal of trouble end of section one section two of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain the editor's preface the art of cookery like all other arts is subject to the variations of fashion and the improvements of taste therefore notwithstanding the just claim of mrs glass's book on that subject to the approbation of the public yet it was apprehended that a careful revisal might render this new edition of her work still more acceptable and more useful how far the editor has succeeded the public will determine but to enable them to judge of his performance it will be necessary to give a sketch of the improvements and alterations on a careful perusal of the last edition the editor noted the deficiencies in many receipts which he hath supplied by adding what was wanting and rectifying what appeared to be wrong in the compositions either as to quantity or quality in the chapter on roasting and boiling he hath made several necessary alterations in point of time in performing those operations of the culinary art and given his directions in as plain clear and comprehensive a manner as possible that the learner may not be at a loss how to proceed he hath also made many alterations and improvements in the chapter on made dishes in that on soups and broths finding room for correction he hath made such amendments and alterations as were requisite and introduced several new ones the chapters on pies and for lent have also received the necessary additions and corrections as to the directions for the sick the editor hath not presumed to make any alteration the author appears to be the best judge of the directions she lays down in this department of her book he hath however expunged her directions for dressing turtle both real and mock and inserted directions adopted to the method he hath constantly and successfully practised for many years and which he is perfectly convinced will answer the expectation of the reader in the course of the corrections alterations and additions made in the work the editor hath endeavoured to be as concise but as intelligible as possible he hath not laid down any rules or inserted any receipts which are not warranted by experience in a course of practice for many years and hopes he has finished his undertaking as a good cook which will sufficiently apologize for every defect of language as a good writer the first has always been his profession to the latter he makes no pretensions End of section two. Section three of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter one, part one of roasting, boiling, etc that professed cooks will find fault with touching upon a branch of cookery which they never thought worth their notice is what i expect however this i know it is the most necessary part of it and few servants there are that know how to roast and boil to perfection i do not pretend to teach professed cooks but my design is to instruct the ignorant and unlearned 
which will likewise be of great use in all private families and in so plain and full a manner that the most illiterate and ignorant person who can but read will know how to do everything in cookery well i shall first begin with roast and boiled of all sorts and must desire the cook to order her fire according to what she is to dress if anything very little or thin then a pretty little brisk fire that it may be done quick and nice if a very large joint then be sure a good fire be laid to cake let it be clear at the bottom and when your meat is half done move the dripping pan and spit a little from the fire and stir up a good brisk fire for according to the goodness of your fire your meat will be done sooner or later beef if beef be sure to paper the top and baste it well all the time it is roasting and throw a handful of salt on it when you see the smoke draw to the fire it is near enough then take off the paper baste it well and drudge it with a little flour to make a fine froth never salt your roast meat before you lay it to the fire for that draws out all the gravy if you would keep it a few days before you dress it dry it very well with a clean cloth then flour it all over and hang it where the air will come to it but be sure always to mind that there is no damp place about it if there is you must dry it well with a cloth take up your meat and garnish your dish with nothing but horseradish mutton and lamb as to roasting of mutton the loin the chine of mutton which is the two loins and the saddle which is the two necks and part of the shoulders cut together must have the skin raised and skewered on and when near done take off the skin baste and flour it to froth it up all other sorts of mutton and lamb must be roasted with a quick clear fire without the skin being raised or paper put on you should always observe to baste your meat as soon as you lay it down to roast sprinkle some salt on and when near done drudge it with a little flour to froth it up garnish mutton with horseradish lamb with cresses or small salading veal as to veal you must be careful to roast it of a fine brown if a large joint a very good fire if a small joint a pretty little brisk fire if a fillet or loin be sure to paper the fat that you lose as little of that as possible lay it some distance from the fire till it is soaked then lay it near the fire when you lay it down baste it well with good butter and when it is near enough baste it again and drudge it with a little flour the breast you must roast with the caul on till it is enough and skewer the sweetbread on the back side of the breast when it is nigh enough take off the caul baste it and drudge it with a little flour pork pork must be well done or it is apt to surfeit when you roast a loin take a sharp penknife and cut the skin across to make the crackling eat better the chine must be cut and so must all pork that has the rind on roast a leg of pork thus take a knife as above and score it stuff the knuckle part with sage and onion chopped fine with pepper and salt or cut a hole under the twist and put the sage etc there and skewer it up with a skewer roast it crisp because most people like the rind crisp which they call crackling make some good apple sauce and send up in a boat then have a little drawn gravy to put in the dish this they call a mock goose the spring or hand of pork if very young roasted like a pig eats very well or take the spring and cut off the shank or knuckle and sprinkle sage and onion over it and roll it round and tie it with a string and roast it two hours otherwise it is better boiled the spare rib should be basted with a little bit of butter 
a very little dust of flour and some sage shred small but we never make any sauce to it but apple sauce the best way to dress pork griskins is to roast them baste them with a little butter and sage and a little pepper and salt few eat anything with these but mustard to roast a pig spit your pig and lay it to the fire which must be a very good one at each end or hang a flat iron in the middle of the grate before you lay your pig down take a little sage shred small a piece of butter as big as a walnut and a little pepper and salt put them into the pig and sew it up with coarse thread then flour it all over very well and keep flouring it till the eyes drop out or you find the crackling hard be sure to save all the gravy that comes out of it which you must do by setting basins or pans under the pig in the dripping pan as soon as you find the gravy begins to run when the pig is enough stir the fire up brisk take a coarse cloth with about a quarter of a pound of butter in it and rub the pig all over till the crackling is quite crisp and then take it up lay it in your dish and with a sharp knife cut off the head and then cut the pig in two before you draw out the spit cut the ears off the head and lay at each end and cut the under jaw in two and lay on each side melt some good butter take the gravy you saved and put into it boil it and pour it into the dish with the brains bruised fine and the sage mixed all together and then send it to table another way to roast a pig chop some sage and onion very fine a few crumbs of bread a little butter pepper and salt rolled up together put it into the belly and sew it up before you lay down the pig rub it all over with sweet oil when it is done take a dry cloth and wipe it then take it into a dish cut it up and send it to table with the sauce as above different sorts of sauce for a pig now you are to observe there are several ways of making sauce for a pig some do not love any sage in the pig only a crust of bread but then you should have a little dried sage rubbed and mixed with the gravy and butter some love bread sauce in a basin made thus take a pint of water put in a good piece of crumb of bread a blade of mace and a little whole pepper boil it for about five or six minutes and then pour the water off take out the spice and beat up the bread with a good piece of butter and a little milk or cream some love a few currants boiled in it a glass of wine and a little sugar but that you must do just as you like it others take half a pint of good beef gravy and the gravy which comes out of the pig with a piece of butter rolled in flour two spoonfuls of ketchup and boil them all together then take the brains of the pig and bruise them fine put all these together with the sage in the pig and pour into your dish it is a very good sauce when you have not gravy enough comes out of your pig with the butter for sauce take about half a pint of veal gravy and add to it or stew the petty toes and take as much of that liquor as will do for sauce mixed with the other note well some like the sauce sent in a boat or basin to roast the hind quarter of pig lamb fashion at the time of the year when house lamb is very dear take the hind quarter of a large roasting pig take off the skin and roast it and it will eat like lamb with mint sauce or with a salad or seville orange half an hour will roast it to bake a pig if you should be in a place where you cannot roast a pig lay it in a dish flour it all over well and rub it over with butter butter the dish you lay it in and put it into the oven when it is enough draw it out of the oven's mouth and rub it over with a buttery cloth then put it into the oven again till it is dry take it out and lay it in a dish cut it up take a little veal gravy and take off the fat in the dish it was baked in and there will be some good gravy at the bottom 
put that to it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour boil it up and put it into the dish with the brains and sage in the belly some love a pig brought whole to table then you are only to put what sauce you like into the dish to melt butter in melting of butter you must be very careful let your saucepan be well tinned take a spoonful of cold water a little dust of flour and half a pound of butter cut to pieces be sure to keep shaking your pan one way for fear it should oil when it is all melted let it boil and it will be smooth and fine a silver pan is best if you have one to roast geese turkeys etc when you roast a goose turkey or fowls of any sort take care to singe them with a piece of white paper and baste them with a piece of butter drudge them with a little flour and sprinkle a little salt on and when the smoke begins to draw to the fire and they look plump baste them again and drudge them with a little flour and take them up sauce for a goose for a goose make a little good gravy and put it into a basin by itself and some apple sauce into another sauce for a turkey for a turkey good gravy in the dish and either bread or onion sauce in a basin or both sauce for fowls to fowls you should put good gravy in the dish and either bread parsley or egg sauce in a basin sauce for ducks for ducks a little gravy in the dish and onion sauce in a cup if liked sauce for pheasants and partridges pheasants and partridges should have gravy in the dish and bread sauce in a cup and poveroy sauce to roast larks put a small bird spit through them and tie them on another roast them and all the time they are roasting keep basting them very gently with butter and sprinkle crumbs of bread on them till they are almost done then let them brown before you take them up the best way of making crumbs of bread is to rub them through a fine cullender and put in a little butter into a stew pan melt it put in your crumbs of bread and keep them stirring till they are of a light brown put them on a sieve to drain a few minutes lay your larks in a dish and the crumbs all round almost as high as the larks with plain butter in a cup and some gravy in another to roast woodcocks and snipes put them on a little bird spit and tie them on another and put them down to roast take a round of a threepenny loaf and toast it brown and butter it then lay it in a dish under the birds baste them with a little butter take the trail out before you spit them and put into a small stew pan with a little gravy simmer it gently over the fire for five or six minutes add a little melted butter to it put it over your toast in the dish and when your woodcocks are roasted put them on the toast and set it over a lamp or chafing dish for three minutes and send them to table to roast a pigeon take some parsley shred fine a piece of butter as big as a walnut a little pepper and salt tie the neck end tight tie a string round the legs and rump and fasten the other end to the top of the chimney piece baste them with butter and when they are enough lay them in the dish and they will swim with gravy you may put them on a little spit and then tie both ends close to broil a pigeon when you broil them do them in the same manner and take care your fire is very clear and set your gridiron high that they may not burn and have a little parsley and butter in a cup you may split them and broil them with a little pepper and salt and you may roast them only with a little parsley and butter in a dish directions for geese and ducks as to geese and ducks you should have sage and onions shred fine with pepper and salt put into the belly put only pepper and salt into wild ducks easterlings widgeon teal and all other sort of wild fowl with gravy in the dish or some like sage and onion in one 
to roast a hare take your hare when it is cased truss it in this manner bring the two hind legs up to its sides pull the fore legs back put your skewer first into the hind leg then into the fore leg and thrust it through the body put the fore leg on and then the hind leg and a skewer through the top of the shoulders and back part of the head which will hold the head up make a pudding thus take a quarter of a pound of beef suet as much crumb of bread a handful of parsley chopped fine some sweet herbs of all sorts such as basil marjoram winter savoury and a little thyme chopped very fine a little nutmeg grated some lemon peel cut fine pepper and salt chop the liver fine and put in with two eggs mix it up and put it into the belly and so or skewer it up then spit it and lay it to the fire which must be a good one a good sized hare takes one hour and so on in proportion different sorts of sauce for a hare take for sauce a pint of cream and half a pound of fresh butter put them in a saucepan and keep stirring it with a spoon till the butter is melted and the sauce is thick then take up the hare and pour the sauce into the dish another way to make sauce for a hare is to make good gravy thickened with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and pour it into your dish you may leave the butter out if you do not like it and have some currant jelly warmed in a cup or red wine and sugar boiled to a syrup done thus take a pint of red wine a quarter of a pound of sugar and set over a slow fire to simmer for about a quarter of an hour you may do half the quantity and put it into your sauce boat or basin to broil steaks first have a very clear brisk fire let your gridiron be very clean put it on the fire and take a chafing dish with a few hot coals out of the fire put the dish on it which is to lay your steaks on then take fine rump steaks about half an inch thick put a little pepper and salt on them lay them on the gridiron and if you like it take a shallot or two or a fine onion and cut it fine put it into your dish keep turning your steaks quick till they are done for that keeps the gravy in them when the steaks are enough take them carefully off into your dish that none of the gravy be lost then have ready a hot dish and cover and carry them hot to table with the cover on you may send shallot in a plate chopped fine directions concerning the sauce for steaks if you love pickles or horseradish with steaks never garnish your dish because both the garnishing will be dry and the steaks will be cold but lay those things on little plates and carry to table the great nicety is to have them hot and full of gravy general directions concerning broiling as to mutton and pork steaks you must keep them turning quick on the gridiron and have your dish ready over a chafing dish of hot coals and carry them to table covered hot when you broil fowls or pigeons always take care your fire is clear and never baste anything on the gridiron for it only makes it smoked and burnt general directions concerning boiling as to all sorts of boiled meats allow a quarter of an hour to every pound be sure the pot is very clean and skim it well for everything will have a scum rise and if that boils down it make the meat black all sorts of fresh meat you are to put in when the water boils but salt meat when the water is warm to boil a ham when you boil a ham put it into your copper when the water is pretty warm for cold water draws the colour out when it boils be careful it boils very slowly a ham of twenty pounds takes four hours and a half larger and smaller in proportion keep the copper well skimmed a green ham wants no soaking but an old ham must be soaked sixteen hours in a large tub of soft water to boil a tongue 
a tongue if salt soak it in soft water all night boil it three hours if fresh out of the pickle two hours and a half and put it in when the water boils take it out and pull it trim it garnish with greens and carrots to boil fowls and house lamb fowls and house lamb boil in a pot by themselves in a good deal of water and if any scum arises take it off they will be both sweeter and whiter than if boiled in a cloth a little chicken will be done in fifteen minutes a large chicken in twenty minutes a good fowl in half an hour a little turkey or goose in an hour and a large turkey in an hour and a half sauce for a boiled turkey the best sauce for a boiled turkey is good oyster and celery sauce make oyster sauce thus take a pint of oysters and set them off strain the liquor from them put them in cold water and wash and beard them put them into your liquor in a stew pan with a blade of mace and some butter rolled in flour and a quarter of a lemon boil them up then put in half a pint of cream and boil it all together gently take the lemon and mace out squeeze the juice of the lemon into the sauce then serve it in your boats or basins make celery sauce thus take the white part of the celery cut it about one inch long boil it in some water till it is tender then take half a pint of veal broth a blade of mace and thicken it with a little flour and butter put in half a pint of cream boil them up gently together put in your celery and boil it up then pour it into your boats sauce for a boiled goose sauce for a boiled goose must be either onions or cabbage first boiled and then stewed in butter for five minutes sauce for boiled ducks or rabbits to boil ducks or rabbits you must pour boiled onions over them which do thus take the onions peel them and boil them in a great deal of water shift your water then let them boil about two hours take them up and throw them into a cullender to drain then with a knife chop them on a board and rub them through a cullender put them into a saucepan just shake a little flour over them put in a little milk or cream with a good piece of butter and a little fat set them over the fire and when the butter is melted they are enough but if you would have onion sauce in half an hour take your onions peel them and cut them in thin slices put them into milk and water and when the water boils they will be done in twenty minutes then throw them into a cullender to drain and chop them and put them into a saucepan shake in a little flour with a little cream if you have it and a good piece of butter stir all together over the fire till the butter is melted and they will be very fine the sauce is very good with roast mutton and it is the best way of boiling onions to roast venison take a haunch of venison and spit it rub some butter all over your haunch take four sheets of paper well buttered put two on the haunch then make a paste with some flour a little butter and water roll it out half as big as your haunch and put it over the fat part then put the other two sheets of paper on and tie them with some pack thread lay it to a brisk fire and baste it well all the time of roasting if a large haunch of twenty four pounds it will take three hours and a half except it is a very large fire then three hours will do smaller in proportion to dress a haunch of mutton hang it up for a fortnight and dress it as directed for a haunch of venison different sorts of sauce for venison you may take either of these sauces for venison currant jelly warmed or a pint of red wine with a quarter of a pound of sugar simmered over a clear fire for five or six minutes or a pint of vinegar and a quarter of a pound of sugar simmered till it is a syrup end of section three
Section four of the Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter one, part two of Roasting, Boiling, etc. From To Roast Mutton, Venison Fashion. Take a hind quarter of fat mutton and cut the leg like a haunch lay it in a pan with the back side of it down pour a bottle of red wine over it and let it lie twenty-four hours then spit it and baste it with the same liquor and butter all the time it is roasting at a good quick fire two hours will do it have a little good gravy in a cup and sweet sauce in another a good fat neck of mutton eats finely done thus to keep venison or hares sweet or to make them fresh when they stink if your venison be very sweet only dry it with a cloth and hang it where the air comes if you would keep it any time dry it very well with clean cloths rub it all over with ground pepper and hang it in an airy place and it will keep a great while if it stinks or is musty take some lukewarm water and wash it clean then take fresh milk and water lukewarm and wash it again then dry it in clean cloths very well and rub it all over with ground pepper and hang it in an airy place when you roast it you need only wipe it with a clean cloth and paper it as before mentioned never do anything else to venison for all other things spoil your venison and take away the fine flavour and this preserves it better than anything you can do a hare you may manage just the same way to roast a tongue and udder parboil them first for two hours then roast it stick eight or ten cloves about it baste it with butter and have some gravy and galantine sauce made thus take a few bread crumbs and boil in a little water beat it up then put in a gill of red wine some sugar to sweeten it put it in a basin or boat to roast rabbits baste them with good butter and drudge them with a little flour half an hour will do them at a very quick clear fire and if they are very small twenty minutes will do them take the liver with a little bunch of parsley and boil them and then chop them very fine together melt some good butter and put half the liver and parsley into the butter pour it into the dish and garnish the dish with the other half let your rabbits be done of a fine light brown or put the sauce in a boat to roast a rabbit hare fashion lard a rabbit with bacon roast it as you do a hare with a stuffing in the belly and it eats very well but then you must make gravy sauce but if you do not lard it white sauce made thus take a little veal broth boil it up with a little flour and butter to thicken it then add a gill of cream keep it stirring one way till it is smooth then put it in a boat or in the dish turkeys pheasants etc may be larded you may lard a turkey or pheasant or anything just as you like it to roast a fowl pheasant fashion if you should have but one pheasant and want two in a dish take a large full-grown fowl keep the head on and truss it just as you do a pheasant lard it with bacon but do not lard the pheasant and nobody will know it rules to be observed in roasting in the first place take great care the spit be very clean and be sure to clean it with nothing but sand and water wash it clean and wipe it with a dry cloth for oil brick dust and such things will spoil your meat beef to roast a piece of beef about ten pounds will take an hour and a half at a good fire twenty pounds weight will take three hours if it be a thick piece but if it be a thin piece of twenty pounds weight 
two hours and a half will do it and so on according to the weight of your meat more or less observe in frosty weather your beef will take half an hour longer mutton a leg of mutton of six pounds will take an hour at a quick fire if frosty weather an hour and a quarter nine pounds an hour and a half a leg of twelve pounds will take two hours if frosty two hours and a half a large saddle of mutton will take three hours because of papering it a small saddle will take an hour and a half and so on according to the size a breast will take half an hour at a quick fire a neck if large an hour if very small little better than half an hour a shoulder much about the same time as a leg a chine of twelve pounds an hour and a half and so on pork pork must be well done to every pound allow a quarter of an hour for example a joint of twelve pounds weight three hours and so on if it be a thin piece of that weight two hours will roast it directions concerning beef mutton and pork these three you may baste with fine nice dripping be sure your fire be very good and brisk but do not lay your meat too near the fire for fear of burning or scorching veal veal takes much the same time roasting as pork but be sure to paper the fat of a loin or fillet and baste your veal with good butter house lamb if a large forequarter an hour and a half if a small one an hour the outside must be papered basted with good butter and you must have a very quick fire if a leg about three quarters of an hour a neck a breast or shoulder three quarters of an hour if very small half an hour will do a pig if just killed an hour if killed the day before an hour and a quarter if a very large one an hour and a half but the best way to judge is when the eyes drop out and the skin is grown very hard then you must rub it with a coarse cloth with a good piece of butter rolled in it till the crackling is crisp and of a fine light brown a hare you must have a quick fire if it be a small hare put three pints of milk and half a pound of fresh butter in the dripping pan which must be very clean and nice if a large one two quarts of milk and half a pound of fresh butter you must baste your hair well with this all the time it is roasting and when the hair has soaked up all the butter and milk it will be enough put your gravy and hot currant jelly in boats a turkey a middling turkey will take an hour a very large one an hour and a quarter a small one three quarters of an hour you must paper the breast till it is near done enough then take the paper off and froth it up your fire must be very good a goose observe the same rules fowls a large fowl three quarters of an hour a middling one half an hour very small chickens twenty minutes your fire must be very quick and clear when you lay them down tame ducks observe the same rules wild ducks twenty minutes if you love them well done twenty five minutes teal widgeon etc widgeon a quarter of an hour teal eleven or twelve minutes woodcocks twenty five minutes partridges and snipes twenty minutes pigeons and larks twenty minutes directions concerning poultry if your fire is not very quick and clear when you lay your poultry down to roast it will not eat near so sweet or look so beautiful to the eye to keep meat hot the best way to keep meat hot if it be done before your company is ready is to set the dish over a pan of boiling water 
cover the dish with a deep cover so as not to touch the meat and throw a cloth over all thus you may keep your meat hot a long time and it is better than over roasting and spoiling the meat the steam of the water keeps the meat hot and does not draw the gravy out or draw it up whereas if you set a dish of meat any time over a chafing dish of coals it will dry up all the gravy and spoil the meat to dress greens roots etc always be very careful that your greens be nicely picked and washed you should lay them in a clean pan for fear of sand or dust which is apt to hang round wooden vessels boil all your greens in a copper saucepan by themselves with a great quantity of water boil no meat with them for that discolours them use no iron pans etc for they are not proper but let them be copper brass or silver to dress spinach pick it very clean and wash it in five or six waters put it in a saucepan that will just hold it throw a little salt over it and cover the pan close do not put any water in but shake the pan often you must put your saucepan on a clear quick fire as soon as you find the greens are shrunk and fallen to the bottom and that the liquor which comes out of them boils up they are enough throw them into a clean sieve to drain and squeeze it well between two plates and cut it in any form you like lay it in a plate or small dish and never put any butter on it but put it in a cup to dress cabbages etc cabbage and all sorts of young sprouts must be boiled in a great deal of water when the stalks are tender or fall to the bottom they are enough then take them off before they lose their colour always throw salt in your water before you put your greens in young sprouts you send to table just as they are but cabbage is best chopped and put into a saucepan with a good piece of butter stirring it for about five or six minutes till the butter is all melted and then send it to table to dress carrots let them be scraped very clean and when they are enough rub them in a clean cloth then slice them into a plate and pour some melted butter over them if they are young spring carrots half an hour will boil them if large an hour but old sandwich carrots will take two hours to dress turnips they eat best boiled in the pot and when enough take them out and put them in a pan and mash them with butter a little cream and a little salt and send them to table pare your turnips and cut them into dice as big as the top of one's finger put them into a clean saucepan and just cover them with water when enough throw them into a sieve to drain and put them into a saucepan with a good piece of butter and a little cream stir them over the fire for five or six minutes and send them to table to dress parsnips they should be boiled in a great deal of water and when you find they are soft which you will know by running a fork into them take them up and carefully scrape all the dirt off them and then with a knife scrape them all fine throwing away all the sticky parts and send them up plain in a dish with melted butter to dress broccoli strip all the little branches off till you come to the top one then with a knife peel off all the hard outside skin which is on the stalks and little branches and throw them into water have a stew pan of water with some salt in it when it boils put in the broccoli and when the stalks are tender it is enough then send it to table with a piece of toasted bread soaked in the water the broccoli is boiled in under it the same way as asparagus with butter in a cup the french eat oil and vinegar with it to dress potatoes you must boil them in as little water as you can without burning the saucepan cover the saucepan close and when the skin begins to crack they are enough 
drain all the water out and let them stand covered for a minute or two then peel them lay them in your plate and pour some melted butter over them the best way to do them is when they are peeled to lay them on a gridiron till they are of a fine brown and send them to table another way is to put them into a saucepan with some good beef dripping cover them close and shake the saucepan often for fear of burning to the bottom when they are of a fine brown and crisp take them up in a plate then put them into another for fear of the fat and put butter in a cup to dress cauliflowers take your flowers cut off all the green part and then cut the flowers into four and lay them into water for an hour then have some milk and water boiling put in the cauliflowers and be sure to skim the saucepan well when the stalks are tender take them carefully up and put them into a cullender to drain then put a spoonful of water into a clean stew pan with a little dust of flour about a quarter of a pound of butter and shake it round till it is all finely melted with a little pepper and salt then take half the cauliflower and cut it as you would for pickling lay it into the stew pan turn it and shake the pan round ten minutes will do it lay the stewed in the middle of your plate and the boiled round it pour the butter you did it in over it and send it to table another way cut the cauliflower stalks off leave a little green on and boil them in spring water and salt about fifteen minutes will do them take them out and drain them send them whole in a dish with some melted butter in a cup to dress french beans first string them then cut them in two and afterwards across but if you would do them nice cut the bean into four and then across which is eight pieces lay them into water and salt and when your pan boils put in some salt and the beans when they are tender they are enough they will be soon done take care they do not lose their fine green lay them in a plate and have butter in a cup to dress artichokes wring off the stalks and put them into cold water and wash them well then put them in when the water boils with the tops downwards that all the dust and sand may boil out an hour and a half will do them to dress asparagus scrape all the stalks very carefully till they look white then cut all the stalks even alike throw them into water and have ready a stew pan boiling put in some salt and tie the asparagus in little bundles let the water keep boiling and when they are a little tender take them up if you boil them too much you lose both colour and taste cut the round of a small loaf about half an inch thick toast it brown on both sides dip it in the asparagus liquor and lay it in your dish pour a little butter over the toast then lay your asparagus on the toast all round the dish with the white tops outward do not pour butter over the asparagus for that makes them greasy to the fingers but have your butter in a basin and send it to table directions concerning garden things most people spoil garden things by overboiling them all things that are green should have a little crispness for if they are overboiled they neither have any sweetness or beauty to dress beans and bacon when you dress beans and bacon boil the bacon by itself and the beans by themselves for the bacon will spoil the colour of the beans always throw some salt into the water and some parsley nicely picked when the beans are enough which you will know by their being tender throw them into a cullender to drain take up the bacon and skin it throw some raspings of bread over the top and if you have an iron make it red hot and hold over it to brown the top of the bacon if you have not one hold it to the fire to brown put the bacon in the middle of the dish and the beans all round 
close up to the bacon and send them to table with parsley and butter in a basin to make gravy for a turkey or any sort of fowls take a pound of the lean part of the beef hack it with a knife flour it well have ready a stew pan with a piece of fresh butter when the butter is melted put in the beef fry it till it is brown and then pour in a little boiling water shake it round and then fill up with a tea kettle of boiling water stir it all together and put in two or three blades of mace four or five cloves some whole pepper an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little crust of bread baked brown and a little piece of carrot cover it close and let it stew till it is as good as you would have it this will make a pint of rich gravy to make veal mutton or beef gravy take a rasher or two of bacon or ham lay it at the bottom of your stew pan put your meat cut in thin slices over it then cut some onions turnips carrots and celery a little thyme and put over the meat with a little allspice put a little water at the bottom then set it on the fire which must be a gentle one and draw it till it is brown at the bottom which you may know by the pans hissing then pour boiling water over it and stew it gently for one hour and a half if a small quantity less time will do it season it with salt brown colouring for made dishes take four ounces of sugar beat fine put it into an iron frying pan or earthen pipkin set it over a clear fire and when the sugar is melted it will be frothy put it higher from the fire until it is a fine brown keep it stirring all the time fill the pan up with red wine take care it don't boil over add a little salt and lemon put a little cloves and mace a shallot or two boil it gently for ten minutes pour it in a basin till it is cold then bottle it for use to make gravy if you live in the country where you cannot always have gravy meat when your meat comes from the butchers take a piece of beef a piece of veal and a piece of mutton cut them into as small pieces as you can and take a large deep saucepan with a cover lay your beef at the bottom then your mutton then a very little piece of bacon a slice or two of carrot some mace cloves whole pepper black and white a large onion cut in slices a bundle of sweet herbs and then lay in your veal cover it close over a slow fire for six or seven minutes shaking the saucepan now and then then shake some flour in and have ready some boiling water pour it in till you cover the meat and something more cover it close and let it stew till it is quite rich and good then season it to your taste with salt and strain it off this will do for most things to bake a leg of beef do it just in the same manner as before directed in the making gravy for soups etc and when it is baked strain it through a coarse sieve pick out all the sinews and fat put them into a saucepan with a few spoonfuls of the gravy a little red wine a little piece of butter rolled in flour and some mustard shake your saucepan often and when the sauce is hot and thick dish it up and send it to table it is a pretty dish to bake an ox's head do just in the same manner as the leg of beef is directed to be done in making the gravy for soups etc and it does full as well for the same uses if it should be too strong for anything you want it for it is only putting some hot water to it cold water will spoil it to boil pickled pork be sure you put it in when the water boils if a middling piece an hour will boil it if a very large piece an hour and a half or two hours if you boil pickled pork too long it will go to a jelly you will know when it is done by trying it with a fork 
End of section four. Section five of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter two, part one. Made dishes. To dress Scotch collops. Take a piece of fillet of veal, cut it in thin pieces about as big as a crown piece, but very thin. Shake a little flour over it, then you put a little butter in a frying pan and melt it. Put in your collops and fry them quick till they are brown, then lay them in a dish. Have ready a good ragout made thus. Take a little butter in your stew pan and melt it then add a large spoonful of flour stir it about till it is smooth then put in a pint of good brown gravy season it with pepper and salt pour in a small glass of white wine some veal sweetbreads forcemeat balls truffles and morels ox palates and mushrooms stew them gently for half an hour add the juice of half a lemon to it put it over the collops and garnish with rashers of bacon some like the scotch collops made thus put the collops into the ragout and stew them for five minutes to dress white collops cut the veal the same as for scotch collops throw them into a stew pan put some boiling water over them and stir them about then strain them off take a pint of good veal broth and thicken it add a bundle of sweet herbs with some mace put sweetbread forcemeat balls and fresh mushrooms if no fresh to be had use pickled ones washed in warm water stew them about fifteen minutes add the yolk of two eggs and a pint of cream beat them well together with some nutmeg grated and keep stirring till it boils up add the juice of a quarter of a lemon then put it in your dish garnish with lemon to dress a fillet of veal with collops for an alteration take a small fillet of veal cut what collops you want then take the udder and fill it with forcemeat roll it round tie it with a pack thread across and roast it lay your collops in the dish and lay your udder in the middle garnish your dishes with lemon to make forcemeat balls now you are to observe that forcemeat balls are a great addition to all made dishes made thus take half a pound of veal and half a pound of suet cut fine and beat in a marble mortar or wooden bowl have a few sweet herbs and parsley shred fine a little mace dried and beat fine a small nutmeg grated or half a large one a little lemon peel cut very fine a little pepper and salt and the yolks of two eggs mix all these well together then roll them in little round balls and some in little long balls roll them in flour and fry them brown if they are for anything of white sauce put a little water in a saucepan and when the water boils put them in and let them boil for a few minutes but never fry them for white sauce truffles and morels good in sauces and soups take half an ounce of truffles and morels let them be well washed in warm water to get the sand and dirt out then simmer them in two or three spoonfuls of water for a few minutes then put them with the liquor into the sauce they thicken both sauce and soup and give it a fine flavour to stew ox palates stew them very tender which must be done by putting them into cold water and let them stew very softly over a slow fire till they are tender then take off the two skins cut them in pieces and put them either into your made dish or soup and cock's combs and artichoke bottoms cut small and put into the made dish garnish your dishes with lemon sweetbread stewed or white dishes 
and fried for brown ones and cut in little pieces to ragu a leg of mutton take all the skin and fat off cut it very thin the right way of the grain then butter your stew pan and shake some flour into it slice half a lemon and half an onion cut them very small a little bundle of sweet herbs and a blade of mace put all together with your meat into the pan stir it a minute or two and then put in six spoonfuls of gravy and have ready an anchovy mince small mix it with some butter and flour stir it all together for six minutes and then dish it up to make a brown fricassee you must take your rabbits or chickens and skin the rabbits but not the chickens then cut them into small pieces and rub them over with yolks of eggs have ready some grated bread a little beaten mace and a little grated nutmeg mixed together and then roll them in it put a little butter into a stew pan and when it is melted put in your meat fry it of a fine brown and take care they do not stick to the bottom of the pan then pour the butter from them and pour in half a pint of brown gravy a glass of white wine a few mushrooms or two spoonfuls of the pickle a little salt if wanted and a piece of butter rolled in flour when it is of a fine thickness dish it up and send it to table you may add truffles and morels and cock's combs to make a white fricassee take two chickens and cut them in small pieces put them in warm water to draw out the blood then put them into some good veal broth if no veal broth a little boiling water and stew them gently with a bundle of sweet herbs and a blade of mace till they are tender then take out the sweet herbs add a little flour and butter boil together to thicken it a little then add half a pint of cream and the yolk of an egg beat very fine some pickled mushrooms the best way is to put some fresh mushrooms in at first if no fresh then pickled keep stirring it till it boils up then add the juice of half a lemon stir it well to keep it from curdling then put it in your dish garnish with lemon to fricassee rabbits lamb or veal observe the directions given in the preceding article a second way to make a white fricassee you must take two or three rabbits or chickens skin them and lay them in warm water and dry them with a clean cloth put them into a stew pan with a blade or two of mace a little black and white pepper an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs and do but just cover them with water stew them till they are tender then with a fork take them out strain the liquor and put them into the pan again with half a pint of the liquor and half a pint of cream the yolks of two eggs beat well half a nutmeg grated a glass of white wine a little piece of butter rolled in flour and a gill of mushrooms keep stirring all together all the while one way till it is smooth and of a fine thickness and then dish it up add what you please a third way of making a white fricassee take three chickens skin them cut them into small pieces that is every joint asunder lay them in warm water for a quarter of an hour take them out and dry them with a cloth then put them into a stew pan with milk and water and boil them tender take a pint of good cream a quarter of a pound of butter and stir it till it is thick then let it stand till it is cool and put to it a little beaten mace half a nutmeg grated a little salt and a few mushrooms stir all together then take the chickens out of the stew pan throw away what they are boiled in clean the pan and put in the chickens and sauce together keep the pan shaking round till they are quite hot and dish them up garnish with lemon to fricassee rabbits lamb sweetbreads or tripe do them the same way 
another way to fricassee tripe take a piece of double tripe and cut it in pieces of about two inches put them in a saucepan of water with an onion and a bundle of sweet herbs boil it till it is quite tender then have ready a bechamel made thus take some lean ham cut it in thin pieces and put it in a stew pan and some veal having first cut off all the fat put it over the ham cut an onion in slices some carrot and turnip a little thyme cloves and mace and some fresh mushrooms chopped put a little milk at the bottom and draw it gently over the fire be careful it does not scorch then put in a quart of milk and half a pint of cream stew it gently for an hour thicken it with a little flour and milk season it with salt and a very little cayenne pepper bruised fine then strain it off through a tammy put your tripe into it toss it up and add some forcemeat balls mushrooms and oysters blanched then put it into your dish and garnish with fried oysters or sweetbreads or lemons to ragu hogs feet and ears take your ears out of the pickle they are soused in or boil them till they are tender then cut them into long thin bits about two inches long and about as thick as a quill put them into your stew pan with half a pint of good gravy or as much as will cover them a glass of white wine a good deal of mustard a good piece of butter rolled in flour and a little pepper and salt stir all together till it is of a fine thickness and then dish it up the hog's feet must not be stewed but boiled tender then slit them in two and put the yolk of an egg over and crumbs of bread and broil or fry them put the ragout of ears in the middle and the feet round it note they make a very pretty dish fried with butter and mustard and a little good gravy if you like it then only cut the feet and ears in two you may add half an onion cut small to fry tripe cut your tripe in long pieces of about three inches wide and all the breadth of the double put it in some small beer batter or yolks of eggs have a large pan of good fat and fry it brown then take it out and put it to drain dish it up with plain butter in a cup tripe a la kilkenny this is a favourite irish dish and is done thus take a piece of double tripe cut in square pieces have twelve large onions peeled and washed clean cut them in two and put them on to boil in clean water till they are tender then put in your tripe and boil it ten minutes pour off almost all the liquor shake a little flour in and put some butter in and a little salt and mustard shake it all over the fire till the butter is melted then put it in your dish and send it to table as hot as possible garnish with barberries or lemon a fricassee of pigeons take eight pigeons new killed cut them in small pieces and put them in a stew pan with a pint of white wine and a pint of water season your pigeons with salt and pepper a blade or two of mace an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a good piece of butter just rolled in very little flour cover it close and let them stew till there is just enough for sauce and then take out the onion and sweet herbs beat up the yolks of three eggs grate half a nutmeg in and with your spoon push the meat all to one side of the pan and the gravy to the other side and stir in the eggs keep them stirring for fear of turning to curds and when the sauce is fine and thick shake all together and then put the meat into the dish pour the sauce over it and have ready some slices of bacon toasted and fried oysters throw the oysters all over and lay the bacon round garnish with lemon a fricassee of lamb stones and sweetbreads 
have ready some lamb stones blanched parboiled and sliced and flour two or three sweetbreads if very thick cut them in two the yolks of six hard eggs whole a few pistachio nut kernels and a few large oysters fry these all of a fine brown then pour out all the butter and add a pint of drawn gravy the lamb stones some asparagus tops about an inch long some grated nutmeg a little pepper and salt two shallots shred small and a glass of white wine stew all these together for ten minutes then add the yolks of three eggs beat very fine with a little cream and a little beaten mace stir all together till it is of a fine thickness and then dish it up garnish with lemon to hash a calf's head boil the head almost enough then take the best half and with a sharp knife take it nicely from the bone with the two eyes lay it in a little deep dish before a good fire and take great care no ashes fall into it and then hack it with a knife cross and cross grate some nutmeg all over the yolks of two eggs a very little pepper and salt a few sweet herbs some crumbs of bread and a little lemon peel chopped very fine baste it with a little butter then baste it again keep the dish turning that it may be all brown alike cut the other half and tongue into little thin bits and set on a pint of drawn gravy in a saucepan a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion a little pepper and salt a glass of white wine and two shallots boil all these together a few minutes then strain it through a sieve and put it into a clean stew pan with the hash flour the meat before you put it in and put in a few mushrooms a spoonful of the pickle two spoonfuls of ketchup and a few truffles and morels stir all these together for a few minutes then beat up half the brains and stir into the stew pan and a little piece of butter rolled in flour take the other half of the brains and beat them up with a little lemon peel cut fine a little nutmeg grated a little beaten mace a little thyme shred small a little parsley the yolk of an egg and have some good dripping boiling in a stew pan then fry the brains in little cakes about as big as a crown piece fry about twenty oysters dipped in the yolk of an egg toast some slices of bacon fry a few forcemeat balls and have ready a hot dish if pewter over a few clear coals if china over a pan of hot water pour in your hash then lay in your toasted head throw the forcemeat balls over the hash and garnish the dish with fried oysters the fried brains and lemon throw the rest over the hash lay the bacon round the dish and send it to table to hash a calf's head white take a pint of white gravy a large wine glass of white wine a little beaten mace a little nutmeg and a little salt throw into your hash a few mushrooms a few truffles and morels first parboiled a few artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops if you have them a good piece of butter rolled in flour the yolks of two eggs half a pint of cream and one spoonful of mushroom ketchup stir it all together very carefully till it is of a fine thickness then pour it into your dish and lay the other half of the head as before mentioned in the middle and garnish as before directed with fried oysters brains lemon and forcemeat balls fried to bake a calf's head take the head pick it and wash it very clean take an earthen dish large enough to lay the head on rub a little piece of butter all over the dish then lay some long iron skewers across the top of the dish and lay the head on them skewer up the meat in the middle that it do not lie on the dish then grate some nutmeg all over it a few sweet herbs shred small some crumbs of bread a little lemon peel cut fine and then flour it all over 
stick pieces of butter in the eyes and all over the head and flour it again let it be well baked and of a fine brown you may throw a little pepper and salt over it and put into the dish a piece of beef cut small a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some whole pepper a blade of mace two cloves a pint of water and boil the brains with some sage when the head is enough lay it on a dish and set it to the fire to keep warm then stir all together in the dish and boil it in a saucepan strain it off put it into the saucepan again add a piece of butter rolled in flour and the sage and the brains chopped fine a spoonful of ketchup and two spoonfuls of red wine boil them together take the brains beat them well and mix them with the sauce pour it into the dish and send it to table you must bake the tongue with the head and do not cut it out it will lie the handsomer in the dish to bake a sheep's head do it the same way and it eats very well to dress a lamb's head boil the head and pluck tender but do not let the liver be too much done take the head up hack it cross and cross with a knife grate some nutmeg over it and lay it in a dish before a good fire then grate some crumbs of bread some sweet herbs rubbed a little lemon peel chopped fine a very little pepper and salt and baste it with a little butter then throw a little flour over it and just as it is done to the same baste it and drudge it take half the liver the lights the heart and tongue chop them very small with six or eight spoonfuls of gravy or water first shake some flour over the meat and stir it together then put in the gravy or water a good piece of butter rolled in a little flour a little pepper and salt and what runs from the head in the dish simmer all together a few minutes and add half a spoonful of vinegar pour it into your dish lay the head in the middle of the mincemeat have ready the other half of the liver cut thin with some slices of bacon broiled and lay round the head garnish the dish with lemon and send it to table to ragu a neck of veal cut a neck of veal into steaks flatten them with a rolling pin season them with salt pepper cloves and mace lard them with bacon lemon peel and thyme dip them in the yolks of eggs make a sheet of strong cap paper up at the four corners in the form of a dripping pan pin up the corners butter the paper and also the gridiron and set it over a fire of charcoal put in your meat let it do leisurely keep it basting and turning to keep in the gravy and when it is enough have ready half a pint of strong gravy season it high put in mushrooms and pickles forcemeat balls dipped in the yolks of eggs oysters stewed and fried to lay round and at the top of your dish and then serve it up if for a brown ragu put in red wine if for a white one put in white wine with the yolks of eggs beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream to ragu a breast of veal take your breast of veal put it into a large stew pan put in a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some black and white pepper a blade or two of mace two or three cloves a very little piece of lemon peel and just cover it with water when it is tender take it up bone it put in the bones boil it up till the gravy is very good then strain it off and if you have a little rich beef gravy add a quarter of a pint put in half an ounce of truffles and morels a spoonful or two of ketchup two or three spoonfuls of white wine and let them all boil together in the meantime flour the veal and fry it in butter till it is of a fine brown then drain out all the butter and pour the gravy you are boiling to the veal with a few mushrooms boil all together till the sauce is rich and thick and cut the sweetbread into four a few forcemeat balls are proper in it lay the veal in the dish and pour the sauce all over it garnish with lemon 
or thus half roast a breast of veal then cut it in square pieces put it into a stew pan with half a pint of gravy a pint of water a bundle of sweet herbs an onion stuck with cloves a little mace and stew it till it is tender then take it out and pull out all the bones strain the gravy through a sieve then put it into the stew pan again with a spoonful of mustard some truffles and morels a sweetbread cut in pieces one artichoke bottom about twenty forcemeat balls some butter rolled in flour enough to thicken it boil it up till it is of a proper thickness season it with pepper and salt then put in your veal stew it for five minutes add the juice of half a lemon then put your meat into the dish the ragout all over it garnish with lemon and beetroot another way to ragout a breast of veal you may bone it nicely flour it and fry it of a fine brown then pour the fat out of the pan and the ingredients as above with the bones when enough take it out and strain the liquor then put in your meat again with the ingredients as before directed a breast of veal in hodgepodge take a breast of veal cut the brisket into little pieces and every bone asunder then flour it and put half a pound of good butter into a stew pan when it is hot throw in the veal fry it all over of a fine light brown and then have ready a tea kettle of water boiling pour it into the stew pan fill it up and stir it round throw in a pint of green peas a fine lettuce whole clean washed two or three blades of mace a little whole pepper tied in a muslin rag a little bundle of sweet herbs a small onion stuck with a few cloves and a little salt cover it close and let it stew an hour or till it is boiled to your palate if you would have soup made of it if you would only have sauce to eat with the veal you must stew it till there is just as much as you would have for sauce and season it with salt to your palate take out the onion sweet herbs and spice and pour it all together into your dish it is a fine dish if you have no peas pare three or four cucumbers scoop out the pulp and cut it into little pieces and take four or five heads of celery clean washed and cut the white part small when you have no lettuces take the little hearts of savoys or the little young sprouts that grow on the old cabbage stalks about as big as the top of your thumb note if you would make a very fine dish of it fill the inside of your lettuce with force meat and tie the top close with a thread stew it till there is but just enough for sauce set the lettuce in the middle and the veal round and pour the sauce all over it garnish your dish with rasped bread made into figures with your fingers this is the cheapest way of dressing a breast of veal to be good and serve a number of people to collar a breast of veal take a very sharp knife and nicely take out all the bones but take care you do not cut the meat through pick all the fat and meat off the bones then grate some nutmeg all over the inside of the veal a very little beaten mace a little pepper and salt a few sweet herbs shred small some parsley a little lemon peel shred small a few crumbs of bread and the bits of fat picked off the bones roll it up tight stick one skewer in to hold it together but do it clever that it stands upright in the dish tie a pack thread across it to hold it together spit it then roll the caul all round it and roast it an hour and a quarter will do it when it has been about an hour at the fire take off the caul drudge it with flour baste it well with fresh butter and let it be of a fine brown for sauce take twopence worth of gravy beef cut it and hack it well then flour it fry it a little brown then pour into your stew pan some boiling water stir it well together then fill your pan two parts full of water 
put in an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little crust of bread toasted two or three blades of mace four cloves some whole pepper and the bones of the veal cover it close and let it stew till it is quite rich and thick then strain it boil it up with some truffles and morels a few mushrooms a spoonful of ketchup two or three bottoms of artichokes if you have them add a little salt just enough to season the gravy take the pack thread off the veal and set it upright in the dish cut the sweetbread into four and broil it of a fine brown with a few forcemeat balls fried lay these round the dish and pour in the sauce garnish the dish with lemon and send it to table to collar a breast of mutton do it the same way and it eats very well but you must take off the skin another way to dress a breast of mutton collar it as before roast it and baste it with half a pint of red wine and when that is all soaked in baste it well with butter have a little good gravy set the mutton upright in the dish pour in the gravy have a sweet sauce as for venison and send it to table do not garnish the dish but be sure to take the skin off the mutton the inside of a sirloin of beef is very good done this way if you do not like the wine a quart of milk and a quarter of a pound of butter put into the dripping pan does full as well to baste it to force a leg of lamb with a sharp knife carefully take out all the meat and leave the skin whole and the fat on it make the lean you cut out into force meat thus to two pounds of meat add two pounds of beef suet cut fine and beat in a marble mortar till it is very fine and take away all the skin of the meat and suet then mix it with four spoonfuls of grated bread eight or ten cloves five or six large blades of mace dried and beat fine half a large nutmeg grated a little pepper and salt a little lemon peel cut fine a very little thyme some parsley and four eggs mix all together put it into the skin again just as it was in the same shape sew it up roast it baste it with butter cut the loin into steaks and fry it nicely lay the leg in the dish and the loin round it with stewed cauliflower as in page seventeen all round upon the loin pour a pint of good gravy into the dish and send it to table if you do not like the cauliflower it may be omitted to boil a leg of lamb let the leg be boiled very white an hour will do it cut the loin into steaks dip them into a few crumbs of bread and egg fry them nice and brown boil a good deal of spinach and lay in the dish put the leg in the middle lay the loin round it cut an orange in four and garnish the dish and have butter in a cup some love the spinach boiled then drained put into a saucepan with a good piece of butter and stewed to force a large fowl cut the skin down the back and carefully slit it up so as to take out all the meat mix it with one pound of beef suet cut it small and beat them together in a marble mortar take a pint of large oysters cut small two anchovies cut small one shallot cut fine a few sweet herbs a little pepper a little nutmeg grated and the yolks of four eggs mix all together and lay this on the bones draw over the skin and sew up the back put the fowl into a bladder boil it an hour and a quarter stew some oysters in good gravy thickened with a piece of butter rolled in flour take the fowl out of the bladder lay it in your dish and pour the sauce over it garnish with a lemon it eats much better roasted with the same sauce End of section five